Oh, president's report that was not said this evening or this after this morning, wherever I'm at. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really concerned that the last NRC meeting, we were informed that there were 50 items in which they were to inspect. 30 of them were not ready to be inspected. Nine of them got closed. Now, that seems like the glasses barely have anything in it. You guys are, well, nine are closed. Like, you're really happy about that. I don't know why the management, which we are paying $400 million over the next 20 years, did not know. We have a vice president of nuclear, we have a brand new plant manager, and under their new guidance, which was supposed to be by your sales pitches, going to make this faster, easier with the NRC, it's going to be so much greater with these guys, because they have experience, and the first thing that they have to do, they got 30 of them, not even ready. How does a manager not know you're not ready? Are you just learning because, you know, like, just walking in and they're saying, well, you got to do this. Well, okay, I'll do that. And then you're just learning on the go. This is highly concerning to me when I see that kind of thing. And that room was dead silent. You were all there. And it was terrible. I just like, oh, my God, how do you, how does management not know what's going on in the new plan? Maybe because there's no design basis documents. You told us $250 million, It's a billion. You're, I, didn't, I didn't hear anything about the Moody's downgrade. Not one thing about a possible Moody's downgrade on your debt. Billion and a half and a half a billion? Senior and minor? Why aren't these in the President's report? Why aren't negative things being said in the President's report? Which would then be a balanced Fox News, fair and balanced. And that's what, I, that's what I'm interested in. And why is that not happening? Why are we not hearing the whole truth, the crane that broke, that was not presented at the, at the NRC meeting uh, back in Elkhorn or back in Blair? Uh, you get, remember when your crane broke on Monday and you were scurrying around for a week and we had a meeting on Thursday at the NRC? You made a great presentation, not one mention of the crane breaking. Okay. I had to bring it up because somebody in the toilet told me. Uh, now, I don't want to have nuclear conversations in the toilet to find out what's going on. I'd like to ask you, and I'd like for you folks to tell us, you know, like what okay. happened this week? Anything bad happened this week? Did anybody drop a wrench? Anything this week? Okay. Well, okay. Right. I'm not okay. trying to be excited. But... We, we, can't we can't comment on a couple of the things. Okay. Uh, first of all, at the meeting, the NRC meeting, the things that they were discussing happened in February and the 1st of March. A lot has happened since then, and we like to deal with the present well, I understand. A lot has happened. How can I trust when I hear that the management didn't know that 30 items were not ready? That's the last thing I heard. And then I come here and you're like, well, what happened in February? Well, what's happening today? Is there other things that they don't know about that's going on? Well, actually, you have a very good report, and I'll stand by that report right now. Uh, Mr. Gates, if you want to comment on that. Just a couple of context things. Uh, the report that, uh, was reported on, on May 17th. It wasn't a case of not knowing they were ready. We had presented to the NRC packages that still had some remaining open items. It was our uh, assumption that we would give them the work we had completed and they would review. Uh, we found that they would rather have the completed full package to review, which we have done now on many of the packages. So it wasn't uh, lack of knowledge, it was lack of where, where we, uh, the assumptions going into it. Why was not the full package understood before you went into it? Like, why didn't you know that you had to have the full package when you did that? The reason for that is, I mean, the, the issue we had going forward, we had presented that that's what we were going to do. The inspection teams come as an independent body, which is good. And when, when you have an independent body, you're going to have some of these uh, issues come up, which we have addressed in the subsequent inspections, which I referenced today. Also, for contextual purposes, we haven't spent a billion dollars to the shutter of the plant. That number keeps floating around. That's not the case. Okay, $335 million, 20 year upgrade. $143 million, Teflon seals. $400 million over 20 years for them. That's $900 million plus tax. It's a billion order, bucks. Point of order, I think this testifier has been here in excess. But that was just incorrect. I just gave you the correct numbers. It's a billion dollars over 20 years. You've spent that. You've okayed a billion dollars. Excuse me, I think we're going to let Mr. Gates comment and then. Thank you for your comments. So. Okay, so will Mr. Gates continue to say a billion? That's not a billion. It is. We have a big problem here. Why is the management not telling the truth? You've announced three times you're going to restart. It hasn't happened. I can't use the word you're lying, but incompetent might be a great word. Thank you very much. Excuse me. At this and I really time, hope you shut is, it down. 
Thank that you. is not respectful discourse. Thank what? you. That you're incompetent? You just had a different number. Respectful discourse. <laughs> My name is Laverne Tran, 4728 Cass. Before you begin, do you have something to say, Mr. Gates? Yes. I think something was um, said. Uh, last meeting I made some comments, and people feel like it was a little personal to Mr. Gates. And uh, I apologize for making that personal attack on you. Uh, we had a discrepancy of numbers, and we were talking past each other. I have done research since, since you brought it up. It's not what I came here to talk about, but I'll go into it. From 2003 to 2033, you currently have dedicated 1.69, 1,690 <clears throat> just to get that clear, and that's including decommissioning costs. You currently are in violation of not filing the proper decommissioning costs in 2012. I know you've added that into your checklist, but <clears throat> just want to make that clear to you. But what I really came here, Mr. Mines, a solution to pollution is efficiency. Purchasing efficiency as your base load is the cheapest way to generate power by not using power. And then after, because every building in the city uses 60 to 80% more energy than it needs to use to perform the exact same tasks. And then after you do a enormous super efficiency job of all the buildings and structures, then you do smart grid. And then you put distributed power on those buildings that use power. Because you're using so much less, solar becomes very effective. There's other fuel cells, there's natural gas, there's a hundred different little systems that you can put on, depending on the factory. And then when you're not using the factory in the weekend, no solar array could be generating power to the community next to it because everybody goes home and uses power in the weekend. <clears throat> so that's how that works, and that is your path, sir. But my real concern is I was, I was, I was watching a thing about how to make a sign that will last longer than all written history to inform the future populations that the nuclear waste you are stacking along the river is dangerous. They haven't been able to come up with that sign because different symbols and languages mean different things to different people. You are stacking hazardous waste, radioactive waste, next to the river for all time. I feel that's an immoral issue, regardless of the financials and the technicals and the structurals. I think it's wrong. I think you do too. None of us will be here to make those decisions in the future. We cast it upon the children that woman brought in. Thank you and have yourself a wonderful afternoon.